Hey guys, it's Gavin, and in this video we're going to take a closer look at the front foot elevated split squat. I'm going to tell you why we use that elevation with the front foot, and we're going to teach you how to perform it properly. If you like this video and you find it helpful, please hit that like button and thanks for watching. Now the split squat is one of my favorite lower body movements because of its functional carryover. The difference between a split squat and a lunge is, in a split squat your feet are going to be fixed in position, and then you're just sinking down into that motion, whereas with a lunge, that involves a step. And that's the big difference between the two movements. One of the greatest benefits of doing a full range split squat is the range of motion involved in multiple joints. So if we break this down a little bit, starting with our feet, and we look at our toes, we're going to be getting full extension with that back foot. Now we move up a little bit and we take a look at the ankle. With that back leg, we're going to be exercising our plantar flexion range, and with the front leg, we're going to be exercising the dorsiflexion range. Moving up the chain a little bit, we're getting full knee flexion in that bottom range, as well as full knee extension in that top range. When we move up to the hips, with that back leg, we're getting full hip extension, and then with the front leg, we're getting full hip flexion. So why would we elevate the front foot with the split squat? Well, there's a few reasons. One reason is to maximize the range of motion in all the primary joints involved. So we take a look at a full range split squat on the flat ground. We're going to see that a lot of hip extension and toe extension are required out of that back leg. If that's not available to us, then we won't be able to sink as deep and get the range of motion that we're looking for out of that front knee. So if we take the book out of here, you can see the amount of extension that's required in this lower position out of my hip and out of my toes in order to get good flexion in that front knee. Now I can limit that range of motion if my hip gets stuck, but now we're not maximizing the range of motion in that knee joint. Now in contrast, with the front foot elevated, you're going to see, as I lower myself down here, I'm able to get full flexion of that front knee. I'm getting more hip flexion at the same time and less hip extension and toe extension out of that back leg. Another reason you might choose to elevate your front foot with the split squat is to reduce the amount of sheer tension on that front knee. Now, if you have cranky knees, this is something that might help you out a lot. So let's take a closer look at how the knee joint works. We're going to pretend that this top arm here is my thigh bone and this bottom arm here is my tibia or shin bone. So they're going to stack on top of each other like this. Now for the side view, we're going to take a look. What happens when that knee flexes is this femur or uh, thigh bone is going to glide on top of the tibia. So we see that motion where it glides forward. So, with any sort of directional force where we're going down and forward, such as walking down the stairs or with your lunge or a regular split squat just on the flat ground, what's happening is that femur's got a lot of that top load force from your body gliding forward and pressing forward into these patellar tendons and ligaments and that kneecap area. So, to alleviate that tension, when you elevate that front foot and you uh, put it up on a step, what's going to happen is that directional force changes a little bit. So it levels out a little more. Instead of it going down on that diagonal, it's now a little bit more horizontal. So as that femur glides on top of that tibia like that, we've got more of a directional force this way and it's horizontal as opposed to that down and forward. So that's how that saves your knee. How do we perform this movement properly? Well, first, let's take a look at your step height. The height of the step is generally determined by your mobility, particularly in the hips. So if you don't have a lot of hip extension available to you, the higher you place the step, the more it's going to help you. Another determining factor is how much you want to deload the stress on that front knee. So again, the higher you place the step, the less strain there's going to be on that front knee. Here's what we're looking for for a proper front foot elevated split squat from the front perspective. So I'm going to take my front foot, I want to plant it firmly on top of that step with full foot contact. I'm going to be about hip width apart with my feet, 
I'm going to stay on my toes on this back foot and make sure that they're also pointing forward. So I'm going to be up nice and tall here. From this position, I want to keep my shoulders and hips squared off with one another, and I want to keep my long bones in line with that front hip. So from here, I'm going to anchor in that front foot and think of pulling myself down, keeping these long bones nice and aligned, and sitting on top of that front ankle. So I'm sinking and traveling down at the same time. From here, I'm driving with even foot pressure. So not just on my toes or forefoot, but also my heel. And I'm driving through that step to come all the way up to that top position. At the same time, I'm scissoring my legs a little bit here. So I get some adductors involved and that helps with stability and balance. So you can see my long bones are nice and aligned, same direction that my foot's pointed and in line with that front hip. Again, you're actively pulling yourself down into that lower position and coming back up to the top. Let's take a look at this from the side. I want my head, shoulders, and hips to stay stacked over one another throughout the entire range of motion. So from here, I'm going to sink down as well as forward, shifting my weight over top of that front ankle midfoot area. You can see that my head, shoulders, and hips, they stay stacked in a line with a neutral spine over top of one another. And then I'm going to press through, keep them in that same position all the way up to the top. So again, pulling yourself down, keeping everything aligned and stacked, sitting on top of that front ankle midfoot area, and then pressing through to come back up again. And that's how you properly perform a front foot elevated split squat. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful and you'll hit that like button and subscribe to this channel. If you want to get in touch with us or leave any comments and feedback, there's a link below. See you next time.